Hi class, welcome to our first course lecture, Scholarship as a Conversation. Um, this lecture content uh, will be important um, background context for discussion one, which is due Tuesday, October 20th. So here's a brief outline. Um, we'll talk about knowledge and how it develops over time. Scholarship is a conversation, the expectations of scholars participating in the conversation, and how the law can impact the conversation. So knowledge develops over time as individuals contribute new ideas and or respond to and critique existing ideas. Thus, ideas are debated and different points of view are taken into consideration. The point of view of the conversation is to, or the point of the conversation is to fill gaps in knowledge or work towards resolving known problems or settling issues. The key is that it happens over time. New students within a discipline learn the basics so that they can have the background and context to join the conversation moving forward. They, and that's you, respond to the authorities, the experts, who are already on the record, and then someone else can respond to your idea. Having new and diverse voices enter the conversation moves it forward and helps the body of knowledge grow, and along the way your personal knowledge bank grows as well. This conversation uh, can be formal or informal in nature. Uh, formal conversations are demonstrated in, a tra in traditional published scholarly literature through use of citations and references. The conversation can also take place in person at academic or professional conferences and events. When completing work for school and professional environments, you're expected to use citations and references in order to provide context for the conversation you're participating in. Examples of um, informal conversations can include online environments such as blog posts and replies, chat rooms or discussion forums, and even social media such as Facebook and YouTube. So knowing how to um, participate in the academic conversation is key and making sure that you know um, which particular citation and reference styles to use is important as it's going to be expected of you as students at CSM or any other college or university. Professors will ask you to use a particular writing and citation style that is standard for that discipline. The style includes everything from what font to use to when to apply italics and specific punctuation marks. Most commonly, this is MLA, the Modern Language Association style for the Languages and Humanities, or APA, the American Psychological Association for the Health and Social Sciences. However, there are other styles you may be asked to use. Library research is part of information science, which is a social science. So for this class, I will ask you to use APA style. Well, we will get to that in a separate lecture, though. Um, the last point that I want to emphasize in the lecture is that the law also plays a role in how this conversation is carried out. Intellectual property law, including copyright on individual works, be they books, journal articles, art, music, etc., impacts when and how we are able to use or respond to the ideas presented within a given work. Imagine if you had to ask each author or creator of a work for permission before you could quote from them or refer to any of their ideas. Fortunately, in the United States, there is an exception to the law called fair use that allows the use of copyrighted material, anything anyone creates, even a five-year-old's drawing is copyrighted and thus protected by the law under certain circumstances. As students and as part of scholarship and research, there is much more leniency when it comes to using copyrighted materials. As a result, we don't have to risk a lawsuit or ask the author or creator for permission every single time we want to use or respond to um, their idea. Uh, even so, most recent work is protected under copyright law and as individuals in the academic world we must protect ourselves as much as possible. 
Make sure your use is not for profit. Avoid copying or using the whole work. Make sure to paraphrase, properly quote, and attribute ideas to the original author or creator. Another strategy is to look for works in the public domain. For example, U.S. government works and some really old works are not protected by copyright law. Um, or you can find works where the author has noted through use of a Creative Commons license which types of uses of their works are allowed. So you know in advance what um, you can do with that work and don't have to reach out and ask for permission. In discussion one, um, you'll be exploring this conversation. Uh, for help with the intellectual property terminology, please refer to the vocabulary sheet that's in the um, readings for Unit 1. You will be expected to know this for the Unit 1 quiz. If you have any questions, please contact me. Um, and I would recommend emailing me questions about Discussion 1, as our next office hour isn't until Wednesday, which is the day after Discussion 1 is due. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, and I hope you're having a great week.